Hi everyone. Today I'm trying to beat the sun. Hopefully it doesn't completely beat me before I can unbox this. Um, recently I started getting into Punch Needle and in particular this set is for my Ultra Punch Needle. So let me see if I can get this close enough to the camera. Um, the Ultra Punch is one that is specifically for embroidery floss. And so I wanna make sure to have separate storage for this than my regular yarns. So the Ultra Punch can be found on Amazon. I kept the packaging so that you can kind of see what it looks like when you order it. It'll look like this. Um, the whole package kind of looks old fashioned, <laughs> but it really is having a growing modern trend. So when you get this one, it comes with three needle sizes. One is already inside of the needle punch, and then there's two more in the bag. All right, so the company that I'm most familiar with that's here in the States for embroidery floss is DMC. Now there's some other custom uh, yarn dyers that have come on board recently as well on Etsy, kind of like yarn dyeing. So I'm starting to get to know some of them as well, but I'm starting my basic storage with DMC since this is the most common company that I can find easily available. I've decided to store mine with DMC's stitch bows instead of bobbins. Um, and I'll get into that more later. But first of all, let's see what came in our box today. So the main thing that I got was this big bag here. And this one is called Stitch Bow. They have two sizes of this. The most common one that you're going to find is the small mini binder but I like the pockets in this large one better. So if you like the layout of this one, keep in mind that this one is a little bit larger than a regular three ring binder, like what you would put eight and a half by 11 paper in or A4 paper. Um, this is a little bit larger than that. The mini one, I wanna say is almost half this size, um, but in particular, the pocket layout is very different in this larger version than their mini version. So this one I purchased directly from DMC's website because this larger one can be hard to find. So it comes in this nice snap pouch here and then we'll open this up. So I really like the design because it reminds me of Honestly, it reminds me of my old kimono when I was a kid. My old kimono was the same color, very similar pattern. So it's meant to be like a travel bag. Um, so it has a nice big pouch in the front. Maybe you can put your patterns there. And then it has these handles that are adjustable. And then it's double zippers with a really nice feature of the um, DMC logo is on the double zippers here. Oh, that glides really nicely. So the setup inside, as you can see, is very similar to a three ring binder. So there's the three rings. And then these are the pouches I was talking about. So here, this pouch has this felt where you can attach your needles. So it's really nice when you're working with embroidery floss to just have a quick place to stick your needles. There's one small zipper area here and one large zipper area here. These are for the stitch bows and I'll show that for you in a second. But what this is, is these are the sleeves where the embroidery floss can be stored. There's, I think they said 15 slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, yes. So there are 15 clear slots 
So that means 15 individual colors of embroidery threads can be stored in this one sleeve. These sleeves in particular of this size are very hard to find right now as well. I don't know if they're planning to discontinue this, but I was able to order from an eBay seller, I believe in the UK, um, a couple more sheets of these, and um, those are on their way. So we'll see. Um, again, this system is something I'm trying out, so I just wanted to see what it would be like. And I also wanted to see the three rings. If it's truly a three binder system, then I know where I have other plastic sheets and where I can make my own pages similar to this if I need to. And in the back, this is a large zipper pocket back here. So again, you can store, what's really nice here is you can even store like a whole embroidery hoop. So your whole project can be housed inside this bag. And since I'm trying to keep my craft supplies very organized and on a smaller scale, I figured for this type of project, um, you know, this would help limit me to the amount of, say, like embroidery floss I keep at a specific time uh, for specific projects. That way I'm not just hoarding and having too many items. So these here are for the mini travel bag. So I wanted to see how well these smaller pouches for storing the floss, if these would fit into the large bag. So it looks like they do. I see some compatibility slots right here. So this particular one has how many sheets? I think it's five sheets. Oh, I'm sorry, three. Three mini binder inserts. So these are three individual pages and each page has five slots. So I can fit an additional 15 uh, stitch bows by adding this to my binder as well. So I thought this would be fun to keep for say some smaller projects and say it's a project with just a few colors in it. This would be a nice way that I could separate the colors for a specific project. Some of these things were just for the cute factor. Um, I do like to keep all of my project stuff together, kitted in my bags, especially with my fiber arts. So I bought the DMC, let me hold this here. This is the DMC thread cutter and yarn cutter. So it's the same logo that matches the handles on the bag itself. So those will fit nicely into one of those zipper pockets. And then this one here matches the pattern exactly. It's a magnetic needle case. Now I've heard that the magnet isn't super huge in here, but let's take a look at what the case itself looks like. Super cute. Love this design on here. And it slides. So this shows you where there's the magnet right here. So you can really put, um, I think this was the complaint that a lot of people had was that this magnet is so small, but honestly, I have so many magnets around this house that will fit in here just fine. So you can put whatever size magnet you want inside of this case and then put your needles on there. And then this slides open and shut and it matches the cake, uh, matches the binder itself. So I really love that. Um, so I'll be using that in my bag. All right, so this is the main thing right here. And again, I will say this is not the most, um, this is not the cheapest way to store embroidery floss. Um, bobbinating them are definitely much cheaper way to do it, but um, I'm getting a little bit older and I have some health issues with my hands. So this looked like an ideal setup for me personally. In essence, what you do is you take your embroidery floss directly off of the paper and you're able to move the full floss directly onto the stitch bow. So the cheapest place again that I found to order this was directly from DMC. So all of these items that you're seeing right here today, I ordered directly from their website and they shipped to me within a week. Um, 
So how these work is they sell them in groups of 10. And if I remember correctly, um, one group of 10 like this was $1.65. So in comparison with bobbins, um, I forget how many bobbins you can get for a dollar. I wanna say it's like 50, maybe 50 plastic bobbins. Um, so these are definitely a little more expensive, but it's not crazy. Um, so I bought a hundred. Now DMC has like 400 some colors, but I know I personally don't need that many colors and I'm trying to stay very project oriented where I buy the colors that I'm using for that specific project. So we'll see how this works over time, but these are the stitch bows themselves. So let me go get the DMC floss that I've ordered so far and we'll try to start loading up our bag. Another item that I purchased separately because it was sold out on the website is the DMC color card. Um, so what this one does is it lists all of their floss colors. This one is pr the printed version um, because I'm making my own swatches. So I didn't pay for the more expensive um, swatch card that has the actual threads on it. I'll show you my swatch. See if I can find it. Oh, I don't have it here. I started creating my own swatches and uh, to go with my punch needle embroidery, and I'll show you what those look like. Um, I'll be swatching out all these threads that I have so far on my Twitch live stream. I go live on, on Twitch for Fiber Fridays um, on Friday nights. Central Standard Time varies a little bit, um, as to what time I do it, depending on what time I get off in the evenings on Fridays, but it's usually around 8.30 p.m. on Friday evenings is when I've started doing my Fiber Friday Twitch stream. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask live, feel free to join me there. Um, Twitch is a free app if you're not familiar with it, and uh, feel free to join me on that over there. So this one, I'm going to just save in this front pocket because that's going to be the easiest place for me to access it all the time. All right, let's see if this works. This may end up being the ideal setup for me for this case. So here's the other needles. They come with a protective cover on their tips. Let's see if we should store these in here. Hey, they fit shockingly, wonderfully. Okay, that's it. So in here, I'll be saving my punch needle needles. That way they don't get damaged uh, while they're in storage. So I have those nicely in here. So we'll put the punch needle in stuff up here. Let's see if they both fit. I don't think they're going to both fit. Mm, no, not without putting too much pressure on my needle, I don't think. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, I'm going to, since this needle is so delicate, I'm going to store it all by itself um, here in this top pouch, whereas here, is where we'll keep our other items. Now this thread cutter, I did notice the edges are a little bit more exposed than you might normally see on a lot of thread or yarn cutters. So just giving you a little heads up there. And then here is where I can save any darning needles or embroidered or tapestry needles that I want for my projects. <clears throat> so also down here is probably where I will start saving my swatches. I am putting my swatches on a bobbin, um, but they are punched out. Um, what do you call? punched out examples so that I know what they look like. And I'll show that more on my Twitch stream next week and we'll keep adding to this collection in here. Okay. And 
then this is a clover non-slip hoop. Now, just to <laughs> say, I did try this last week on my live stream on Twitch, and even this hoop, as good as it is, um, I was not able to hold my um, punch fabric tight enough. The weaver's cloth that I was using seems to be just a little too thin and a little too stretchy for this particular hoop. So I'm gonna try this hoop again with monk's cloth and see if that goes any better for me. Um, but I do have a Morgan hoop um, that I'm going to try this week. It's much larger than this one, but I am gonna try that Morgan hoop. So we'll demonstrate that one on Twitch and see if we have better success and we'll be able to compare the two. But for now, since I do use this with embroidery, um, I'm just gonna store it in this back pocket for now. Now, these are those stitch bows, and for this, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so that you can see things a little more clearly. Okay, so just like they said, there are three sheets, and so we can open our binder here. Yes, they do, there we go. Okay, so I put one sheet there, Let's see if we can overlap these at all. Nope. I don't feel like I can comfortably put it that direction. I feel like I have to put it here at the top and then I can adhere this hole right here. Yeah. It's a little snug, but it definitely works. Okay, there you go. So I believe on the mini binder, I believe that its clips are right here and right here. Um, so these are made specifically for the mini binder, but I have been able to um, adjust them to fit into this big binder. So they're not going to flip super, super easy, but they do flip and they're definitely within the holes just fine. So these are definitely going to be the better ones to get. So I have two more of these on the way. And if I really like it, I'll go ahead and get some more. Again, these will hold 15 and these will hold up to five. I think I'm going to go on the mini pages because these I got with the idea of We'll do a little bit of both because the white is meant to be like to use on anything, white and black. Um, so I'll put these, the white on the larger page. And then I know for the smaller page, for example, I got the purples and the greens for a specific project. Whereas I got the pinks and the browns for another project. Um, I forgot what kind of flower for this one. I think these are, hmm, I don't remember what flower I was doing with these. I think it's going to be like um, lavender, lavender blossoms, whereas this is going to be cherry blossoms. And I was looking at some of the browns. So we'll see how that goes. This is kind of a neutral as well. So we'll put the gray, white, and black together on the larger one. Okay. the anatomy of a stitch bow. <laughs> so here from this end to this end is where the floss will be draped. And right here is where you can save your tag uh, from your paper. So um, from what I've seen on some videos, some have said that this has uh, slid off because um, they're meant to be made interchangeable. So I might add just a little dot of glue uh, to hold my labels in place, and I can always change that out over time. But let's start with one. So this particular floss color here is labeled 962. So this big label is the one that you definitely wanna save. And so that's the one that is going to slide on here. You know, I don't know how anyone can say these have been sliding off, because this is tight. 
I don't think this is gonna go anywhere on me. It's actually kind of nice. So the label on my particular DMC floss has like a bit of extra reinforcement tape here. So as I slid it on, it didn't go anywhere and it didn't rip on me either. It's nice and sturdy and it's really on there. So you can really see the number and everything are fine. Okay. So the idea is you're able to take this entire skein just the way it is, just like that. And loop it through the top. Hold on to it. Curve your bow a little bit. And loop the rest of the floss onto it there. And now my entire skein is already ready to go. So why I like this in particular is I'm able to unwind, say 18 to 24 inches that I want. I cut it, I can split my strands and it's ready to go. I'm not having to um, unwrap and unwrap and having all these little bumps in my, um, not having all these little bumps in my thread. So that's how easy it is. Super fast, super easy. So if you're like me and you have issues with your hands, this is really easy to use. So we'll put this with my, I'll call this my Sakura project or my cherry blossom project. And so these are on the front. And so I'm able to just slide it in. So your number will be right there. You can scooch it over a little bit more if you want. There you go. And then you're able to see your number right through the packaging. All right, well, that was easy. Let's do another one while we're at it. Now with my shading, I, I'm trying to take kind of the same concept as I do with, say, my colored pencils. So this is my darker one. I didn't have these stitch bows when I first started um, dividing out this color to do my swatch. But you'll see this is my lightest pink, my next shade of pink, and then my darkest shade of pink. So. Uh, as far as my shading in that particular project, that's my plan. So this one I'll unravel and put onto the stitch bow, but I'm gonna wait on that because I have that label somewhere else. Oh, here we go. Here's the label. So we're good. All right, let's try it. Yeah, that one slid on there super easy. So this can kind of give you an idea of if you decide to switch systems how easy or not easy it might be to um, re, what would you say, re-bobbin your project onto a stitch bow. You'll see it's super easy. You'll just take your bobbin and just let it spin. And just, let me see, the key is I think, hold on to the side piece. That way you can get the tension nice and tight with your existing embroidery floss. Um, I had kind of made like a mini yarn skein with my embroidery floss when I took it off last week for last week's Twitch stream. So the Twitch stream is just really nice because it just shows real time working on projects, um, it's also nice because I can get some ideas from you guys of, you know, maybe how to do something better on my project that I'm working on or see, um, tell me about projects you guys are working on, what you found has worked for you, what's not working for you. So that's what we're discussing there. All right, so that was fast and easy. 
So again, I'll find my next little slide right here. Oops, go this direction. Make sure my little section is down. And there we go. So yeah, so easy. All right, let's get some more of these going. So I know I bought some of these greens and see this is gonna be the benefit of having these swatches and things because I bought these colors unseen. They're good, but I don't know if that's the contrast I wanna go with on my petals. We'll see. Um, I'm going to look at my, let me show you something on the swatch card real quick. This will prove my point, what I'm trying to talk about here. Okay, let me show you what I'm trying to do here. So here is the numbers for the green is uh, 522, and the number on this one is 501. Okay, so here is the list of all the numbers. So if I look right here, 501 is on line number nine. So these are the columns, and here is column number nine, and my 501 is way down here. Now, if I were looking at this chart, ideally what I would have probably purchased if I had had this chart at that time is I'd probably do a 500, a 501, and a 503. That would have given me my darkest shade, a medium shade, and a lighter shade. Um, but instead, I have, for my lightest shade, mine says 522. And you'll notice 522 is nowhere on this particular column. So I'm gonna go back to my master list here. 522 is found on column 12. So I go over to column 12. Here's 522. So they're saying, so that would be this one right here. So probably more ideal for 522. Contrasting color would have been either this 520 right here or I could have jumped up here in the 3000s, but the three that would probably be ideal for shading uh, would have been the 520, 522, and 524. So that's the benefit of having this card. Um, you'll really be able to see how they've grouped things as the manufacturer as far as uh, grouping families of shading. Um, so that shade family would be a closer match than combining two colors that they'll work. I mean, as you can see, they will work side by side. It is possible. Um, but something along this line would have been even better for the eye, I believe, like this shade against this shade here. So we'll see what I end up deciding to do when it's actually time to make this project. But I am guessing that I'm going to be switching out one of these to be closer to the other color family. I really like this shade in particular, so it's probably this one that I'm gonna end up changing out. But for now, we'll put them on our stitch bows and put them in our storage pocket.
So in the end, I do think I'm going to be able to store about a hundred different colors of threads in here. I'm going to try to fit as many of the swatches as I can. I went ahead and bought the DMC stickers to put those on my swatches that I punch out. Um, it stores everything I need for my ultra punch inside of here. I'll probably take out this clover hoop, but I really love having this DMC card in here to choose my colors. So again, join me on Twitch. I'll be live there. You'll be able to chat live with me um, through the online chat system that they have. And that is on Fridays, Fiber Fridays. Just look me up as Two Tiny Treasures. It's a free app. Look forward to seeing you there. And hopefully very soon, I will have some free downloads of punch patterns for you, as well as those for purchase on my website at ColleenHollis.com. I'll see you soon.